welcome to the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. Uh, I'm Joyce Betancourt, the Vice President of no uh, Avacon, the nonprofit that helps run this. And you may, of course, you know me as my avatar here, Rhiannon Chat Noir, and probably in other virtual worlds. Uh, this is our eighth year, and we're um, decided to we're delighted to open up the the conference with the uh, the Open Simulator Core Dev Group again and uh, spotlight them. Um, so it's our eighth conference year, but 13 years of Open Simulator, and the and met the many developers that have been working on this open source, multi platform, multi user um, 3D application software that is running this conference grid and many other Open Simulator grids. Um, and of course, yes, the, the hundreds of public grids and the many private that we uh, virtual grids that we don't even uh, that we don't uh, see. Uh, I'll put a link in the chat in a second uh, about the, the stats for the active grids. Um, in this video, uh, well, well, we have a video and I'll actually add that here too to the chat. Uh, we put together a video as we usually do of the core uh, contributions like the dev that's happened in Open Simulator over the years, and here's the URL for that. And uh, you can definitely see the the you know the work that's been put in this year, and then also uh, you can look back at prior years too. We keep them up on our our YouTube page. Um, and today, well, today we're going to have Lear Lobo uh, as um, the co-chair of OSCC with me who's going to be moderating this panel. Um, and uh, I should, do you want to turn, I guess I can turn it over to you, Lear, to introduce folks, and then we can kind of go from there. You thank you, Joyce. Okay, thanks. Yes. Thank you, Joyce. And hello, everyone. We were so delighted to see you this year, and we're so delighted to be a community and to be together. Well, I have the privilege of introducing Melanie Meland, as an Open Simulator core developer, Melanie has been one of the most active contributors to the virtual world software, and in particular for Open Simulator. As her avatar, Melanie Milan, she is a longtime Second Life resident and gained much experience in using virtual worlds. Yubit Yubarov is currently a lead core developer for Open Simulator, and he's been working on the project since 2012. He was instrumental in coding and implementing into the Open Simulator code base, many of the updates that were part of the Open Simulator 0.9 update and developing the upcoming releases. Krista Lopez, as Diva Canto, is a professor within the Department of Informatics, Donald Bren School of Information and Computer Sciences at the University of California, Irving. She is an IEEE fellow and, of course, well known for her contributions to Open Simulator and to the hypergrid. Robert Adams has been an Open Sim Simulator core developer for many years. His Open Simulator work includes the Bullet Sim physics engine, the DSG dis distributed scene graph simulator experience, and many performance improvements. Outside Open Simulator, he has been a computer developer and researcher for 40 years. He has a current interest in distributed simulation and robotics. And then we have Kevin Cozens, who is uh, Andrew Heleshanks. Kevin has been coding for open source projects since 1992, including being a member of the Open Simulator core developer team since March of 2014, and created or maintained several add on modules, including the Open Sim Search, the Open Sim Profile, and the Open Sim Mute List, the modules that are used within the Open Simulator project. You can find him reporting bugs, bug triaging, and updating the Open Simulator project. Well, thank you to our core developers. Let's begin the session. So let's see. Um, what is, how, how is everyone doing today? Uh, what is new with each of you? I think I'll start. Uh, who would like to begin first? Um, is there, would anyone like to talk about what you're currently working on? Let's see, Krista. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It's absolutely a thrill to be back here uh, on the, on OSCC for the what's like the seventh time, eighth time. This ah, oh, this is the eighth annual. Eighth, you're right. Uh, 
it's unbelievable. <laughs> and especially this year that uh, so many other conferences out there are going to in some form of virtual environment. Uh, this one continues to be the one that uh, I think is my favorite uh, of of everything. It, I mean, it, there's a there's a really nice feeling to being in a 3D virtual world and not just on Zoom. Um, so uh, it's it's a pleasure to be here. I uh, this this past year, I unfortunately I didn't because of many things happening, including having to deal with. COVID in the family and lots of other things. I wasn't, I didn't have as much time as I would to contribute to uh, to the code base of OpenSIM. So my my contributions this year were mainly to make sure that I'm I'm paying the bills to get the continue to have the the you know the uh, Open Simulator hosting up and running and uh, updating the Diva distribution every so often. Um, but I have been following um, from uh, you know from here, been uh, closely following what is going on in OpenSIM, and of course I think that Ubit should go next to to see because he's the real uh, main contributor for the past couple of years. Thank you, Krista. And to the point you just made, with 178 contributors and over 496,000 lines of code, we are so appreciative of everyone's contribution, past and present. You bit. What's what's happening with you? Hello, everyone. I'm glad to see you all again. Well, I've been working, adding a new bugs and things like that to our future release uh, 092. Uh, that is a bit overdue because I keep adding changes and not giving enough time to check if it is a, a good uh, release candidate. Basically that. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's wonderful, and thank you. And Kevin, how are you doing? Uh, just doing fine, thanks, and good morning, everyone. Uh, been a busy year for me. I do some work uh, in embedded systems, and uh, the work I'm doing for a particular client's been keeping me uh, really busy in situation that uh, helping the person out with, and. So I haven't been uh, as active uh, with OpenSIM as I would have uh, liked this year, um, although I have been just recently made a few small little minor changes to the uh, modules I maintain. And I also have started uh, a while back an Open Simulator events module, which would be uh, a module to allow people to uh, make notes of events in grids that they were interested in attending and that it would be able to remind them of when those events are coming up. Um, that's a work that started, but unfortunately I haven't had time to uh, get back to finish working on that. And say I work from home, so uh, I've been safe in all this craziness that's been going on. To, hoping that uh, I'll have a bit more time this coming year to uh, get back to a bit more uh, open sim work. I think well, that's we, probably... Yeah, that's great. You have to realize we are so appreciative I can't imagine what life would have been like this past year if we didn't have worlds like this to come together as a community to not just socialize and, and, and heal, but also to share and to dream of a better future. So I want you, each of you to realize that it's not so much what you've done this year as what a profound impact you've had on our lives. And I just wanted to thank you for it. Melanie, you know, Many of your contributions have shaped our behavior today, and we're so thankful for your guidance. How are you doing in this time of COVID? Well, um, since I've always worked remotely, I'm uh, pretty familiar with uh, working remotely even during COVID. Nothing much has changed for me. Um, I've, um, uh, I did lose my job, had to find another one, which I did in the middle of lockdown. Um, I've um, not done a lot on Open Simulator in terms of uh, code commits. I think there were like maybe four or five commits on uh, three days in this year. Uh, but um, I've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes um, for OS Create as well as uh, to uh, create an environment where Open Simulator can be deployed in Kubernetes containers. 
So um, uh, that is something that is going to come down the pipeline once I get it worked out how to do it, how to have everybody be able to do it quickly and easily. But um, I believe uh, Kubernetes container and orchestration are the future also for OpenSIM. Oh, thank you. You know, we were so inspired. What was it two years ago well, or maybe three now when you were talking about the opportunities of bridging with other software engines such as the Unreal Engine. And you made us dream of so many different opportunities. There's been quite a bit of work throughout the community in thinking about these bridging opportunities. Well, let's see. So Robert Adams, Mr. Blue, we saw you dancing up a storm yesterday. And <laughs> oh, how are you doing? Well, I, I came by to dance um, to uh, support the community. Um, like other people, I've been working on other projects. Uh, other virtual world projects. There are, there are, um, with this virtual um, work remotely thing happening, uh, the world has become hip deep in virtual world projects, and uh, and you know, Open Simulator uh, continues to be uh, an example to all the other ones, um, and. Um, I'm here to support the community. Hey, that's great. You know, yesterday we held the educator um, meetup and they were talking about Dockers. And I had to laugh because remember last year you had inspired several of them to <laughs> to take off and try try uh, some of your techniques that you were recommending. So yeah. you bit. Oh, yeah, I'm last... sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Tell us about that. Well, I mean, last year I did uh, present um, at, at the OSCC the um, a dockerized version of an open simulator uh, region and uh, uh, the code is still out there on github that's right and that's uh that, it was wonderful to hear that the educational committee community had picked up your ideas and were of course using them so you bit you were telling me about the environment enhancement uh, features and I'm not as familiar with it. I was wondering if you could describe, I, I know you're running it on OS Grid, aren't you? Yes, OS Grid is using uh, the latest uh, version of uh, OpenSIM and so several other grids. For example, Open OpenSIM Fist was running also with the latest version, version uh, supporting the new environment features. Uh, basically, that is a feature that the viewers are introducing that allows uh, more options to define the environment of a region. For example, we, you, we will be able to define uh, the, the environment for each parcel uh, and also for, for different altitude levels. Uh, and also just a few improvements to the wind light system, uh, new features, the moon now can be set independently from the sun and things like that, okay? It's something that you can see already in several grids using um, several viewers like experimental Firestorm, etc. Does it, does it take any additional performance uh, or server server uh, load to run that uh, that enhancement? On that, on that, the server is just a provider storage and provider of the, of the, the information. Um, the, all the load and wood, all the work is done via your side as most of the things. <clears throat> and yes, it had some impact on, on the, the frame rate that viewers were able to, to achieve, but I think that it's working okay. Oh, that's great. So the latest version of Firestorm for OpenSIM would be able to see and use these features? Yes, I think Firestorm is about to release a, a new version pretty soon that will support um, that feature. There are also other views, but I can't speak much about them because I'm not having uh, that uh, contact with, with uh, their teams, uh, except uh, they turn. But I think at the moment, data will not have uh, this feature. It has other improvements, not this one. OK. You know, that reminds me. You were talking to me about Vivox. And I didn't know if you wanted to share anything with the community about some potential changes that may be coming down the road. 
Well, I'm not sure about the future on on the Vivox support. Um, as you know, Vivox had a policy to provide um, free accounts for OpenSIM use. I cannot tell how will that go. Also, I when I asked them for some support to improve our our code to support it, I got um, no answer at all. They just said uh, to keep using what we have. And now with the change that um, now that Vivox is uh, completely incorporated into Unity, it's just a, another product of Unity. I'm not sure about the future, and we may need to find another uh, solution for voice. Okay. Thank you. And I remember last year we were we were talking about the upcoming early bakes on mesh support. How is that going? I'm sorry, I, I was distracted. Can you oh, please repeat? Oh, that's okay. Uh, the bake on mesh. I know uh, there was quite a bit of attention about that. Is that um, is is that a feature that everyone's enjoying? See, I get a little isolated. I'm I'm off teaching university classes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> sure. Well, yeah. bake on mesh was introduced in the last version. This region is already supporting it. From our side, there was um, no need to make. Mm, those change on on the, on our code. Uh, same view, for example, for the new version of Firestorm will support improved resolution on the on the bikes that are used for uh, also for bikes on mesh. Um, I think the problem is just a problem of the content creation. Um, the typical problem on OpenSIM is uh, to have um, creators making new things so for us to to use uh, there is the, the for avatars there is that uh, roof and roof i think that's the name uh, open source uh, avatar project that does support uh, bakes on mesh and possible there are some other creators um, creating avatars for us with uh, with the, those features Absolutely. okay thank you and um, I was looking over the list of what we were talking about last year as far as new OSSL functions, the Y engine as an experimental option. How is that going? Well, the um, 0 09 uh, 2 will have um, uh, improved um, some improvements to Y engine, including the options to extend the language a little bit with some uh, features like uh, switch, case, uh, try and catch, just optional because if you uh, use the, those on a script, only that version of I, I engine will be able to, to run it. Oh, so many things. <laughs> uh, okay. Of course, we keep extending, <clears throat> extending our own uh, extensions to LSL, the OSL uh, extensions. And uh, we have, I did have a few more functions. We'll see that on the release notes when they, they come out. Okay. That's um, yeah, um, the uh, wiki page that lists the available OSSL functions, um, we're trying to keep that up to date as, uh, as, there have, you know, as changes are made in terms of uh, new functions uh, being, that are being added. Um, that page is being kept up to date and the new features are usually flagged so that uh, you know people want to keep up to date with uh, what's happening with the OSL support, they can look at that wiki page. Wonderful, thank you. And I want to thank all of our core developers. We have a short system, a session this morning, but we will have a VIP session over lunch later with the, with the core dev team. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org slash schedule. Following this session, the next session will begin at 7.30 a.m. and it is entitled, We Are Going to America. We encourage you to visit the OSCC 20 Poster Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region along with our sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions. Thank you again to the core dev team and to you, the audience, our community. Let's have a great conference.